if I'm entering a new market in Africa, uh, I need to make a number of trips there before, um, before I can find the right partners. Now, ideally, you're actually based in that market and you're not flying in and flying out, uh, but you can't be based everywhere. Um, and so when I, when I go to the country, there are a number of key players, both private and public sector, that I need to talk to. And you get a general sense of who, who are the leading players in the industry, who are well-respected, who are not well-respected, who have done deals before, either within your sector or maybe an associated sector. In emerging and frontier markets, it's still about relationships. They're not looking through the yellow pages like we used to 50 years ago. They're not looking through the internet and saying, oh, this is the company I want to deal with. If you want to sell to them, you've got to be present. The locals are the best to know the nuances of the place. So a partnership uh, and will, will ensure acceptance and will engender trust. The most important thing in really being able to tap into the expertise that is on the ground in Africa is to come to Africa with a real desire to do partnerships and not to come in thinking you're going to save anybody. Uh, Africa might just save us with all that Africa has to offer us. This is not charity, this is not aid, this is partnership, this is economic growth, this is where you know, people get together with both sides winning and producing really innovative first-time goods. I think it's important to travel and actually spend time in, in each of the markets. Um, and they're, they're all so unique, they're all so different. I think it's really easy to overgeneralize um, and it's easy to have misperception. It's like marriage, um, and you need a number of face-to-face -face interactions and working together on something to really get a sense of that right partner. You need to know that the people you're working with are, are honest brokers, that, they, um, that their system is good, that you're not going to be ripped off. And, and you also need to, to have partners on the ground um, as you see a growing middle class in Africa. Businesses are interested in results. And results are built on what? In Africa, results are built on relationships. And so the more we can understand that business is not a function of sending emails, it's a function of picking up the phone and talking to people, it's a function of traveling to places where you meet people, personalizing the transactions, that's what's going to give us the long-term relationship in these countries. As somebody had said, you know, we can go to meetings and we can exchange cards and all that, but until you've had dinner at my house, we're not doing business. So you really have to create that relationship. And I think that's, that's actually quite logical. Think globally and act locally in the sense that you have basic values that drive your business and they apply wherever you are in the world, but when you apply them, you apply them in that local situation. I think it's very important to consider if I'm a company is how do I get information, good information. It's all about information and access to information. You know, if you are a CEO sitting in you know, Minnesota or somewhere in the US and you know, most of what you hear on Africa is what you see on CNN or reading the newspapers, you, you know, that is true and that is correct, but you're not getting a full picture about what the real opportunities are, what the real risks are. News and information is king, and, and that's, that's the case all over the world. Um, Africa has been plagued by um, lack of information infrastructure in the past. Um, it hasn't been a place where it's been easy to um, get information, to travel back and forth. There's a lot of misinformation about um, the opportunities and the risks um, that exist in Africa. And quite frankly speaking, it is because for too long, um, there haven't been enough organizations such as IGD um, shedding the light and really providing a platform um, for a very critical assessment of the opportunities and the risks involved. Do you listen to people who have already been there? Whether or not they're successful, you want to talk to them about their experience in, company, in country. And I think an organization like uh, IGD has done a lot in terms of, um, you know, exposing the true picture of, of Africa. We have found in our research that most American companies make their decisions in international business in these emerging and frontier markets based on word of mouth. So despite all the analysis and stuff they do, they go to a company who's been there or a bank or someone who says, well, what do you think about doing business in Benin? 
They say, well, this has been our experience. And that has more impact than all the studies produced by consulting firms. Really what communications does, it, it informs people, it brings transparency to the system, um, it brings openness to a system. But I think it's really important to have a broad set of knowledge and to talk to as many people as possible and use the resources that are available to you. 